New Orleans Saints co-defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen hired away by the Atlanta Falcons, and it comes with a lot of impact, some potentially good, but a lot of things to keep an eye out on as well. Got that? And a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into this live emergency episode of Locked on Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much as always. Make Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget we're free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube as well. And I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media, CrescentCitySports.com, USA Today, Saints Wire, Tuesdays on the NFL, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. They're here to help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Appreciate everybody for being here and jumping in for this live emergency episode of Locked on Saints. On today's episode, we're taking a look at uh, New Orleans Saints co-defensive coordinator being hired away by the Atlanta Falcons. Now the Atlanta Falcons Defensive coordinator, sole defensive coordinator job. We'll point out why that's important and why the New Orleans Saints could be shifting to one defensive coordinator. We'll also, of course, talk about the impact of losing Ryan Nielsen because they do lose a little bit here with Ryan Nielsen headed to Atlanta. And we'll break down the potential ripple effects that could come next now that he's on his way to Georgia. So let's get this thing started. The New Orleans Saints losing Ryan Nielsen, bad thing, right? Clearly, bad thing, but could mean a good thing for co defensive coordinator Chris Richard, who could be tapped to now be the Saints' sole co or excuse me, sole defensive coordinator. So let's break down what happened here. The New Orleans Saints had both Ryan Nielsen and Chris Richard as their co defensive coordinators in 2022, which means that them getting an opportunity to be a sole defensive coordinator with another team is something that the Saints can't stop, right? They can't block that. There's nothing they can do to get in the way of that. In the eyes of the NFL, moving from a co-coordinator position to a sole coordinator position is a promotion, so no club blocks are available to the Saints in that case. So Ryan Nielsen on his way to the Atlanta Falcons. Now, that could spell bad news for the New Orleans Saints. We'll talk about sort of the lasting impact that comes with losing Nielsen, but for the Saints, they could now look over at Chris Richard, who has received interviews with the Carolina Panthers, as well as the Miami Dolphins, and say, hey, here's this bright, new, shiny, sole defensive coordinator position that we have for you here in New Orleans. Please don't go anywhere. And they could keep Ryan, or excuse me, Chris Richard in New Orleans by making him the sole defensive coordinator, giving him a job that he hasn't held or that he would then hold for a second time. He was the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator years ago before stepping away from football for a year and then returning to the New Orleans Saints, becoming their secondary coach, and then eventually their co-defensive coordinator. So the thing to keep in mind here is that losing Ryan Nielsen means that you don't just lose a co-defensive coordinator. You can fix that if you can promote Chris Richard and get him to stay, but you are going to be in the market now for a new defensive line coach. Don't forget the New Orleans Saints with that co-defensive coordinator structure had Ryan Nielsen acting not only as a co-DC, but also as a defensive line coach. Chris Richard acting not only as a co-DC, but as a defensive backs coach as well. So the Saints still lose something here, even though there's already a built-in mechanism to fill the void at defensive coordinator, they'll still need to fill the void at defensive line coach. Now, I don't have any names for you in terms of the ones that are going to be able to come in and be the defensive line coaches. That's going to be a lot of senior bowl networking and stuff like that. That's going to happen. We'll continue to cover that as we go through. What I'm mostly focused on right now is the defensive coordinator spot. What are the New Orleans Saints going to do there? Because with Chris Richard also receiving some 
looks in interviews out there, as I mentioned, with the Panthers and also with the Miami Dolphins, both of which have a lot of talent on their defense. The Saints could potentially end up losing him and then being in a big old hole because then they would have no defensive coordinator, no defensive line coach with Ryan Nielsen out, and then no secondary coach with Chris Richard out. Now, if the Saints were to lose Chris Richard, it seems likely that they could just promote Corey Robinson into being their secondary coach and then go out and find their next defensive line coach and their next defensive coordinator. We'll discuss my top candidate for defensive coordinator a little bit later here in a moment, but just just so that you know, it's Steve Wilkes. So for the Saints, if they're going to be without Ryan Nielsen for the next season, what type of an impact does that have? So the first thing that you should keep in mind is the type of coach that Ryan Nielsen is. He's a player's coach. He's somebody that gets along with them very well. Very well. He played the position just like Chris Richard did. In fact, he and Chris Richard were at NC State together. So there's a whole bunch of different pieces in terms of what it is that Ryan Nielsen has done over the course of the years that has resonated with not only the New Orleans Saints, but the New Orleans Saints players and roster as well. We knew that it was only going to be a matter of time before Ryan Nielsen was hired away. If you remember, a couple of years ago, Ed Ogeron over in up in Baton Rouge tried to hire Ryan Nielsen away and went so far as news breaking that Ryan Nielsen was headed to LSU. Sean Payton, though, took exception to that because Coach O didn't call Sean to talk to him about it, ended up blocking it, which he could do at that time, even though it was a technical promotion because he was going to be a uh, a defensive coordinator in that role. They ended up being able to block it because A, it was going to the college ranks, but also B, they promoted him, Ryan Nielsen, to assistant head coach as a part of that move as well to get him to stay in New Orleans. I can tell you for a fact, for a fact, that there were also NFL teams ready to bring in Ryan Nielsen that same offseason, but that promotion to um, to assistant head coach, and I'm sure a little bit of a preliminary conversation saying, hey, you're next in line, should anything happen here, we need a defensive coordinator, that those were the things that ended up keeping him in New Orleans. Now, at this point, there's nothing New Orleans Saints can do, they can't do anything like that at this point to keep this from happening, so... Ryan Nielsen is an Atlanta Falcon, and he might not be the only one that becomes an Atlanta Falcon from a New Orleans Saint over the course of this offseason. Uh, one other thing that I should make sure that we answer before we start diving into a look at the impact of this move, I've had some folks ask me over the course of the last you know hour or so, if the Saints end up getting any kind of compensation for Ryan Nielsen being hired away. So, I should be very clear, they are not getting any type of compensation, and it's for two reasons. It's a promotion, he's going off for a better job, all of that, but also, he's not a minority candidate, right? The the two third-round compensatory selections go to minority candidates, and not only is he not a minority candidate, but he's also not getting promoted into a head coach position or a general manager position, which are the only ones that fall under the NFL sort of rules around the... Uh, uh, you know, trying to bolster minority talent in head coaching and general management circles. So for that, for so with that in mind, understand the Saints will not receive any compensation for having Ryan Nielsen taken away. It just stinks because he was a really, really good defensive coordinator and a really, really good defensive line coach for New Orleans. They had a real gem where they 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 took advantage of finding a real gem in Ryan Nielsen. The fact that they held out, held on to him through five seasons is pretty impressive. But the good news, Saints still pretty good at defensive coordinator, but it will still have those ripple effects. Let's talk a little bit about the major impact that comes with losing Ryan Nielsen because Ryan Nielsen is not the type of coach that you see just growing on trees all over the place across the NFL. We'll discuss that and break it a little bit more down as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Once again, thanks here for being here for a live episode Today's live emergency episode brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. If you're a small business owner, maybe a hiring manager, you know how important it is to make sure that you find the right fit for your company because finding the right fit is a big part of finding the success that you need. Many of us have used LinkedIn to look for jobs, but did you know that you could also post jobs and hire through LinkedIn as well, something they make super, super easy and convenient by making sure you have all the tools necessary like screening questions, uh, your ability to be able to, to promote to over 875 million million membership profiles to make sure that you're finding the right people with the right skills, values, and experience to make sure that you're achieving your goals with your team. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
All right, family, continuing on with this live uh, emerge. I keep wanting to say postcast because I'm so used to doing postcast, but emergency episode of Locked on Saints. Appreciate you being here for potentially a second time today. And a big thank you to everybody in the chat. Uh, Michael T. Dirty, uh, Wit Now, I see you. Or sorry, Win It Now, I see you. Austin, Brian, Hoodie Jube, I see you, homie. Rando, I see y'all. Brian Pearson, thank y'all very much for being here. And of course, for everybody that's watching or listening later as well. So what's the impact? of losing a Ryan Nielsen. Well, the fact of the matter is that the impact is pretty large. Um, Ryan Nielsen was no slouch. Uh, Ryan Nielsen was not the type of coach that you can just go and grab somebody and replace, whether it be a defense, whether you're talking about defensive line coach, or even if you're talking about defensive coordinator, although he didn't call plays. So here's a couple of things that just kind of quantify Ryan Nielsen's impact since arriving in New Orleans. In 2017, where he was hired by New Orleans, coming over from NC State, first of all, he became a big-time recruiter, recruiter for the Saints. They brought in you know, some really good defensive line talent. They did a good job developing defensive line talent as well, particularly on the interior, getting undrafted guys like Taylor Stallworth and Shai Tuttle and Malcolm Roach coaching them up, the big-time development of a guy like David Onyemata who hadn't been playing football but for a couple of years before arriving in New Orleans, he was major in terms of the development of those players, particularly those on the interior. Things never really fully worked out for them over on the edges, right? We saw that with Michael, with uh, Michael, Marcus Davenport. We've seen that with a little bit with Peyton Turner now as well. But then you also look at the development of like a Carl Granderson and a Trey Hendrickson. That was a big part of what Ryan Nielsen did. So he was a guy that developed talent really, really well. Not 100% hit rate, but there's no such thing in the NFL. The other numbers that really quantify what it is that Ryan Nielsen brought to New Orleans, ever since showing up in 2017, the New Orleans Saints have had at least 40 or more sacks, right? At least 40 sacks within 16 games of each season since he arrived in 2017. And this was a team that a lot of times came in at the high 20s, High 30s if you got lucky, mid 30s sometimes when it came to uh, sack count in throughout a season. And so he really helped to step up what the New Orleans Saints were doing as a team and as a unit with getting pressure on the quarterback, more exotic uh, rush packages, getting pressure with the front four, multiple fronts, did the rotations, the things we used to talk about being a hockey team type rotation to where five guys, you know, four guys would be on as pass rushers, four would run off, three new guys would run on, and then they would change out some additional personnel. He was a big time pioneer for all the things that made the New Orleans Saints a feared pass rush team since 2017. He, of course, also was a huge part in terms of why the New Orleans Saints became a feared team when it comes to run defense as well, with the exception of 2022, oftentimes being a top 10, in many cases also top five, top three run defense in the NFL, something that they always sort of hung their hats on was their ability to stop the run and force the opposing team to pass. Sometimes that worked in their favor. Sometimes it did not. But for the Saints, this was massively a part of their identity, and Ryan Nielsen helped it become more than just a goal, but truly a part of their DNA. So what kind of goes unimpacted here, unimpeded? Something to keep in mind is that also since 2017, since those things have been happening, not only has Ryan Nielsen been on the coaching staff, but... but Dennis Allen has been the defensive play caller. So there's some good news there. No matter what, no matter who holds the defensive coordinator position in New Orleans, Dennis Allen's going to be the guy calling the plays. He's going to be the one that's executing the game day game plan, all of that. But what you lose is a developer at the position coach uh, spot. You lose the guy that's been teaching these players that has uh, sort of forged a relationship with these players. The fact that Dennis Allen calls plays is something that could potentially impact their external defensive coordinator uh, search, though, if they go that route. Let's say the Saints aren't able to promote, um, uh, that, sorry, Gundam's asking, so what does it mean losing Nielsen? It's exactly what we're talking about right now. So if you lose Nielsen, but also lose Chris Richard, right, you're going to have to go external. You're going to have to go outside of the facility in order to bring in a defensive coordinator. You could maybe elevate Michael Hodges, but Michael Hodges, the New Orleans Saints uh, linebacker coach, has been excellent in that role. He's been phenomenal in that role, and I think he's been too good in that role, so I'd want to keep him there for a little while longer. And so the Saints could go outside. They could look at a Steve Wilkes. They could look at a Brian Flores. As long as those guys, A, don't get head coaching opportunities elsewhere, but which would be their first and foremost you know, priority, but then also B, 
are they okay not calling the plays? Are they okay installing the defense, running the defense, install, you know, teaching the defense, doing all of that, developing the talent, but not calling the plays on game day and working with Dennis Allen at that capacity? So that's going to be a little bit of what you're going to be watching in terms of the politics of what that New Orleans Saints defensive coordinator position becomes if it turns to an external co coaching search, an external hiring search. There's a chance it doesn't. Right? There's a chance that the Saints are able to get Chris Richard to just stick around and be the New Orleans Saints' sole defensive coordinator, which would still be a promotion, would still be a new tax, you know, not a new tax bracket, but a new, uh, a new payment scale for them, all that other stuff. So I I'm a big fan if they go outside to talk to Steve Wilkes, to talk to Brian Flores, but knowing these New Orleans Saints, they'll stay in-house first and they'll talk to Chris Richard, which I don't think is a bad choice. All of the things that we can say about Ryan Nielsen, Chris Richard is also. We saw the impact that Chris Richard had on Marcus Williams as a tackler. We saw the impact that Chris Richard had on, I would dare say, even guys like uh, Daniel Sorensen, how quickly Alante Taylor developed, how quickly Paul Sinadibo developed. Chris Richard had a lot to do with all that. So he is also an excellent developer. He is also an excellent leader of men. Both of these guys, amazing communicators understands what it is that they that their players need how to speak to them how to build relationships with them all of that so the saints staying in house to chris richard is an excellent idea but if they lose chris richard now that they've lost ryan nielsen steve wilkes and uh, brian flores should be at the top of everyone's list unless of course they get opportunities to head coach elsewhere that more so applies to uh, brian flores because steve wilkes didn't get any looks at head coach outside of, of course, the Carolina Panthers keeping him in, having a, you know, an interview with him, all of that. Um, but they ultimately gave that job to Frank Reich, right? So now Steve Wilkes probably isn't going to enter the head coaching conversation or cycle for any other teams. So he could be looking for another defensive coordinator role somewhere. So I think that both, either one of those guys would be an excellent, ex just to borrow, I was about to say the same thing, keeping it real, would be an excellent addition to uh, the staff for sure. But if they stick with Chris Richard, also good. Okay. I've repeated myself enough. Sorry. Um, so I think that the next thing that we look at here is the potential ripple effect, right? Could the exit of Ryan Nielsen be followed by an exodus of defensive talent for the New Orleans Saints roster? We'll break that down as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints. And today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. The playoffs are here. I know you're excited about it. I'm excited about it as well. And so is FanDuel. And uh, we are very excited too about our new sports betting partner here at Locked on because it's the number one sports book in America. It is FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better because they have so many great new features uh, that help make betting on sports more fun and easy. And if you're a new customer, you're going to join today and get started with $150. $50 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first bet of $5. Just sign up today at fanduel.com slash locked on. I caught the, the Cincinnati Bengals at plus uh, uh, plus one and a half, uh, you know, one and a half point underdogs. They went up to one and a half point favorites. They're now one and a half point underdogs again. So it is your time here not to miss out on that, right? Head over to fanduel.com slash locked on and place your first $5 bets. So you can get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, official sports book partner of the NFL. And of course, official sports book partner here, the Locked On Podcast Network. Let's get it. Who that nation wrapping up today's live emergency episode of Locked on Saints. We got 144, 148 of y'all here in the chat. Thank you very much for being here for this live episode. Please take a moment to hit the like button for me as well. Share this out. All that good stuff. It's Friday. What's up, Carla? Appreciate y'all being here. If you're live listening later, uh, however it is that you're catching the show. So let's discuss the ripple effect here of Ryan Nielsen being hired away. Uh, by the Atlanta Falcons. We talked about how the Saints can address their defensive coordinator position, what that potentially means for Chris Richard. Now, what does it mean for their um, roster and the potential ripple effect that comes with a coach of yours not only being hired away, but being hired away by a division rival, right? Doesn't it like suck a little bit more that it's also the Atlanta Falcons? Of course it does. So the first thing you're going to be looking at here is that at the same time that the news came out that 
Ryan Nielsen had been hired by the Atlanta Falcons. News also came out that the Atlanta Falcons moved on from their inside linebacker coach, their defensive line coach, and their secondary coach. Two specific positions there are ones that you're going to want to watch for, inside linebacker and secondary coaches. Now, I'm not suggesting that Ryan Nielsen's about to call up Chris Richard and say, hey, homie, come through to Atlanta with me and coach these DBs. That's not going to happen, right? Like, new At the very least, Chris Richard has a defensive coordinator offer here in New Orleans, more than likely. But there is the opportunity for uh, Ryan Nielsen to lift a guy like Corey Robinson, for instance, who has been a defensive assistant for the New Orleans Saints. That is a shoe-in to elevate to secondary coach or defensive backs coach if Chris Richard either gets hired away or becomes the the sole defensive coordinator in New Orleans. Now, there's a chance that Chris Richard can hold on to that secondary coach position, that defensive backs coach position while also being the defensive coordinator. But it seems like if you're not splitting that defensive coordinator role with somebody, you kind of want to be 100% in on that, right? Like, doesn't that make sense? So Corey Robinson is one that you hope that the New Orleans Saints are able to protect. But maybe an even bigger name that you're watching for the New Orleans Saints to keep from getting poached away to the Atlanta Falcons here would be Michael Hodges. Now, Michael Hodges did magnificent work along with Demario Davis. And the way that Michael Hodges would explain it, kind of in concert with Demario Davis, although Michael Hodges was the guy that was the voice, right? He was the coach. He made the decisions, all those things, uh, but did a phenomenal job with Demario Davis, with uh, 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 Pete Werner, with Caden Ellis, who took off this year as a bona fide NFL starter, despite being a seventh round draft pick that like maybe six of us were talking about before the draft. And then, you know, you seen what he's been able to do with turning guys like Andrew Dowell and Nephi Sewell and Zach Bond into solid special teamers and more as well. So that's another one that you're really hoping that, you know, Ryan Nielsen doesn't have the influence to, to take away. So Michael Hodges, Corey Robinson, those are two names that you're watching for. You're also watching for some other defensive assistants as well that could potentially be lifted to uh, by Ryan Nielsen that he's gotten to work with over the course of the past five years that he could bring over to assume position coach opportunities with Atlanta. But do not be surprised if Ryan Nielsen brings some of that Saints coaching staff with him. Uh, um, I kind of like, sorry, I saw somebody in the chat a second ago mention another defensive coordinator name. Uh, it was Mel who said, go spoil Sean Payton and get Vic Fangio as your defensive coordinator. Wouldn't that be hysteri- like hilariously petty? Hilariously petty is, the, is what I'm looking for there. The other thing that you're watching for here is the potential exodus of defensive line talent and defensive talent by the New Orleans Saints, right? We talked about some of the guys that Ryan Nielsen has helped to develop. And this could be something that's ongoing. This might not happen just this year, but it could happen over the course of the next year. Like Jalen Dalton's already there in New Orleans, excuse me, in Atlanta, somebody that Ryan Nielsen loved here in New Orleans. But Marcus Davenport's about to be a free agent. Could he end up in Atlanta? Um, David Onyemata is about to become a free agent as well, potentially, right? The Saints push that contract back so that the money doesn't become guaranteed and the contract doesn't void and all that stuff before March instead of mid-February. So the Saints have a lot of time to figure out long-term contracts with those guys, but that's, that's a little bit down the road here. If David Onyemata were to become a free agent and you're Ryan Nielsen, you're like, I can grab David Onyemata. I've already got Grady Jarrett. I get to put those two guys together, invest some draft capital into the edge rusher spot, and bam, Ryan Nielsen gets to effectively start off with a clean slate at defensive line in Atlanta and build it in his image, build it the way that he wants to. So that's a big thing to watch. The other names to watch here is that the New Orleans Saints don't have any defensive tackles under contract in 2023. Not only is Onyemata a free agent, but so too is Shy Tuttle, so too is Malcolm Roach, so too is Contavia Street. And Contavia Street had a fantastic year with the New Orleans Saints. A big part of that was his relationship that he developed with Ryan Nielsen. Ryan Nielsen could potentially now poach him in free agency over to Atlanta. Here's another big name and another big sort of realization to have. Not only did Ryan Nielsen work as the defensive line coach, but part of his role as the co-defensive coordinator was to take care of the front seven. So he also developed relationships with a guy that is a massive free agent for the New Orleans Saints this offseason in Caden Ellis. Caden Ellis was somebody that showed you he can go out there 
play you know a handful of games and get seven sacks. That's not to say that Ryan Nielsen would go after him and try to convert him into a defensive lineman. That might not be the right move because then you're kind of pigeonholing him when he can do a lot of things well. But him working with the front seven, him working with Caden Ellis as a pass rusher, those that relationship could mean that Ryan Nielsen could potentially try to convince Caden Ellis to go to Atlanta over the course of the offseason as opposed to resigning with New Orleans. That's a huge one, a huge one to keep an eye out on and maybe one that won't get as much attention because Caden Ellis didn't play on the defensive line. But bear in mind, Ryan Nielsen touched that entire defense. He was a part of what that entire defense was in 2022. Now he'll go to bring all of that together in Atlanta in 2023. So for the Saints, must keep free agents like David Onyemata, Caden Ellis, potentially at a little bit more risk. No team can talk to any players until those players have become free agents. The Saints could try to re-sign them before they ever hit the market. Don't get me wrong. But for the Saints, keeping those guys just got a little bit harder if they do hit the open market. So bottom line, the New Orleans Saints lose a good coach here right? Let's be real. They lose a very good co-defensive coordinator. They lose a very good defensive line coach. They can still fill their defensive coordinator position with Chris Richard already in the building, but they'll need to go outside of the facility to find a defensive line coach more than likely. Expect senior bowl week and the job fair that it becomes to be a part of that. Second or lastly, the next, you know, I'm out here grinding. We always grinding, Marlon. You know how it goes. The next piece is play calling doesn't change. That's going to be Dennis Allen, no matter what, but what happens this offseason now after Ryan Nielsen hired away? You're watching other assistant coaches, position coaches, things like that that Ryan Nielsen could poach away to Atlanta. And of course, you're watching defensive free agents this offseason because now they got a little spy over there, not only in Terry Fontenot, but now in Ryan Nielsen that could try to lure some of those guys over to Atlanta while he's building a defense in his image. So he can literally promise them, I'm bringing you here. It's inaugural. It's under development. We're doing it our way right off the bat. You come here. I can tell you exactly what role you're going to have in this defense. That's a major pitch that he can make. Will be interesting, though. The Atlanta Falcons are running a 3-4. Do they shift back to a 4-3? Do they stick with a 3-4? If they stick with a 3-4, that might help the New Orleans Saints out a little bit. But remember, the Saints played a multiple front ever since Ryan Nielsen showed up. You'll probably see them play a multiple front in Atlanta as well. So the appeal will still very much be there. All right. That's what we're looking at here. Now that Ryan Nielsen is officially or about to be, be officially the um, Atlanta Falcons defensive coordinator. Now we await to see what happens with uh, Chris Richard. All right. I'm going to see if I can end this stream around 28 minutes and 30 seconds just to get a 28-3 in there because I'm mad at the Atlanta Falcons right now. But I want to tell you that I appreciate you so much for jumping in for what was an extra episode this week. And of course, a uh, you know, I'm petty like that. And of course, was an emergency live episode. So I appreciate you if you joined live, if you listened or watched later. Really, really love all of that. So thank you very, very, very much for coming through and for continuing to support the show. As uh, coming up on Monday, I'll be in Mobile for the Senior Bowl. So we'll do a Senior Bowl mock draft so that you're able to kind of get an idea of where some of these Senior Bowl prospects are landing, sort of where they have an idea, uh, you know, where they might go in the draft, all of that. And we'll do a mock draft so that you can learn a little bit about them and what it is that we're watching for over the course of the week. Then I'll have practice reports all three days, a whole bunch of good stuff. So I have all of that taken care of for you and coming up next week here on Locked on Saints. Appreciate you as always for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Uh, also, don't forget to go and check out Locked on NFL as well. I appreciate y'all as always making me part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints, around these episodes make sure you follow me on twitter at ross jackson n-o-l-a hit me up let me know how the family's doing let me know how you're living let me know how your mom and them and trust you that nation i'll holla at you in card and we're ended at 28 30 gotta love it see y'all soon